His writings laid the foundations of modern English comparable to how Dante instrumentally formed modern Italian. In England in the 14th century, common people spoke in dialects while the nobility used French and Latin for communication, and he was the first to begin using English, both in poetry and prose. Geoffrey Chaucer, the greatest poet of the pre-Shakespearean period, is considered by right to be the father of English poetry. Geoffrey Chaucer was born in London around the year 1340. His father was a wealthy wine merchant who supplied libations to the royal court. By the time Geoffrey was 17, the boy was appointed as a page at the luxurious court of King Edward III. Entertaining the queen, young Chaucer read aloud or retold someone else's works of literature, and he translated from French into English the Romant of the Rose, which was popular at that time and then he started to compose his own verses in the style of courtly poetry with its motifs of love sufferings. Chaucer's earliest piece of literature is the poem A Book of the Duchess from 1369. It was ordered by his patron, John Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, to memorialize his deceased wife. He took to the field of battle twice in wars against France. During the first engagement, Chaucer was captured and held for ransom. King Edward III paid to have him free. The ransom was 16 livres. But at the same time, the king paid about eight times more for the release of two horses. Chaucer served as the king's valet and later his sword bearer. He was, by any definition, a man of means and could afford to buy books. Then, in the 14th century, the price of a single volume sometimes may have cost as much as a house, and Chaucer managed to assemble a private library comprised of 60 books. Chaucer was one of the most enlightened people of his time. He was reputed to have been a knowledgeable and reliable person. He was entrusted by the king to fulfill secret diplomatic tasks in France and Italy. In the birthplace of the Renaissance, he learned Italian and became familiar with Italian literature. According to legend, Chaucer met Petrarca who read to him his Latin translation of Giovanni Boccaccio's novel about Griselda. Later, Chaucer included this novel into his Canterbury Tales. Chaucer served all his life to the English crown, Edward III, Richard II, and Henry IV. For 12 years, he worked conscientiously as a custom supervisor in the Port of London, living in seclusion in the Tower of Aldgate. His solitude afforded him the opportunity to write verses at leisure. The Parliament of Fowls, the House of Fame, and Troilus and Chrysidae are some of the titles Chaucer produced. Being influenced by Italian authors, his poetry acquired an elegance and refinement that had never existed before in English literature. Chaucer's emphasis shifted from platonic love to the vicissitudes of life. He often borrowed poetic phrases and plots from Boccaccio, Dante, and Petrarca, but his handling of dialogue with a certain atmosphere made his creations unique. The most famous work of Geoffrey Chaucer is The Canterbury Tales. It is an epic poem following a group of pilgrims as they make their way towards Canterbury Cathedral to worship at the tomb of St. Thomas Becket. Befell that in that season, on a day in Southwark, at the Tabard, as I lay ready to start upon my pilgrimage to Canterbury, full of devout homage. There came a nightfall to that hostelry, some nine and twenty in a company, of sundry persons who had chanced to fall, in fellowship and pilgrims were they all, that toward Canterbury town would ride. The pilgrims, a knight, a miller, a pardoner, a shipman, and a friar, tell each other stories while in a tavern. Each story reflects the character's social position and attitudes. Chaucer gives equal voice to high and low society, filling conversations with subtle humor, and he weaves together a literary quilt that covers every aspect of English life. The Canterbury Tales are characterized not by direct reference to time, but by indirect astronomical indications. And the young sun into the ram, one half his course has run. The poet was well read in astronomy and even wrote treatise on the astrolabe for his son. In 1386, Chaucer, as a well-to-do and respectful man, represented the county of Kent in the parliament. 
but after he fell out of grace with the king's uncle, Thomas Woodstock, Chaucer's well-being declined. Now he lived by occasional handouts and odd jobs, whiling away the time with his favorite books. All of this probably inspired the poet to write the ironic and mischievous book, The Complaint of Chaucer to His Purse. For which unto your mercy thus I cry, Be heavy again, or Ellis must I die. Then his fate made an abrupt turn. The poet was appointed as the manager of the royal construction work, and thus he was in charge of the construction and refurbishment at Westminster and other buildings and castles. Geoffrey Chaucer's life ended in 1400. He was laid to rest in Westminster Abbey, the first of many poets to be honored. Where he lies has come to be known as the Poet's Corner. Geoffrey Chaucer, the predecessor of Shakespeare, played a tremendous role in the formation of English literature and created a bridge between Middle English and the modern English spoken today. As American literary critic John Gardner stated, Chaucer, as well as Shakespeare, wrote for all, for the learned and for the common people, hence his unfading glory and enormous popularity.